What's up, you absolutely wonderful Magento loving friends of mine? Joseph here with another question to test your prove or enhance your expert status. This is an interesting question. As with all of our questions, my goal is to make it as practical as possible. And there's no better way to make it more practical than to rely on what we deal with day in and day out. Let me tell you about this. You already probably know that we're an agency. We build e-commerce websites. That's primarily what we, especially what we do. This obviously, this training aspect comes out of this, but that is part of the value of the training that we provide because we learn stuff. We do unfortunately make some mistakes, hopefully not too often, but we do make some mistakes and we learn from those mistakes. At least that's our goal. Unfortunately, today is one of those cases that it's a very, very easy mistake to make that we've already made once, and I think I actually recorded a video about it a while ago, and we made this same dang mistake again. It's fatal. Easy mistake, fatal consequences. Bear with me. Let's take a look at how this uh, this plays out. Now, this is a very different format of a question than uh, I did in the previous time, but the, same, the net result actually might be the same. Ah, you're thinking. You're thinking. I get it. Okay, well, let's move forward here. Uh, you are doing a code review for the following commit. The developer has indicated this can be run inside a RabbitMQ consumer. What concerns do you post to this review? Feel free to add additional thoughts as well. All right. Now, I want to stress that it's one thing to do a code review and say, ah, oh, does this is this semicolon in the right space? Do we have the right number of spaces and tabs? You know, it's kind of this basic stuff. Next level is saying, okay, you know, how are we using best using the features available in the system? But then the next level is understanding how this piece of the puzzle fits into the big picture. And one way to facilitate that, if you are listening to this as a developer, you might be thinking about uh, how you can help the person reviewing your code to provide extra context. And in this case, I actually did provide a little context here. Developer has indicated this can be run inside a RabbitMQ consumer. RabbitMQ meaning Rabbit Message Queue. It's a tool that comes with Magento to run processes in the background. So let's take a look at this code. We'll do, we're gonna analyze it here quickly. The first thing we see is the name of the class, which seems reasonable. Uh, we see our uh, private uh, cache variable, class uh, variable here. Again, it's type hinted, so this is good. We have our PHP 8 constructor, private um, get cart item price. Get our, Okay, so that's that's good. It's assigning um, our, we would reference it as this. We see down here, this get cart item price, just like this. Uh, one thing that we might call out, though, is the similarity of these names. This is clearly a caching layer on top of our price calculator. However, uh, this doesn't seem to indicate and I, I indicate that. So we have a some critique there that I would definitely put down. We should probably change this to be get cash card item price. Now, one thing you will notice is that this is taking advantage of what I call an action pattern. And basically in our Magento modules, we have an action directory that has well-named, very specific units of business functionality. Uh, and so each one of these classes has one public method called execute. Uh, and in this case, we follow that pattern. Now, it makes it very nice to build uh, pieces of additional pieces of business logic because we have we're fitting them together as one piece, and here's another piece. But we're pulling these other actions in. Okay, now if we have a class that gets too big, and oh shoot, we need to work on the work with this private method down here. We're like we need another class to meth, uh, to work with this. We just pop that private method out into a new class, rename the method name as execute, change it to be a public method and take our original class endpoint over there, over to this new class and call this functionality. Very easy, works so well with testing, because ultimately if you wrote an integration test against the original um, original class, you just run that integration test after you make those changes, and if it works, you know that it's gonna continue to work. So it's really, really helpful in this way. So uh, continuing on here, we have our checking to see if, oh, actually, we have our ternary operator here. Remember, ternary operator evaluates for empty, so that would be null, uh, false, um, uh, empty string, and zero. So in this case, we are casting to a zero, and this is checking against that. Not a problem. Continuing, continuing on here, we have our uh, null safe operator, we, which is used twice. Uh, shouldn't be a problem here. Uh, 
yeah all right so this is this is pretty basic let's look at uh others outside of that one critique that we have this might seem like a trick question what's going on here uh, we're going to talk about the bigger picture so let's look at this here uh, first off the int conversion on line 13 will always return the first result in this ternary op operation I think this is getting this answer is getting the ternary operator confused with the null coalesce operator. See, the null coalesce is those two question marks. I'm gonna put a dot right there at the bottom. That's the two question marks test for null. So if the left side of that, or actually not for you guys, it's the left side of that is uh, util. If that is uh, null, it's going to then return the value from the right side piece of cake right there. So ultimately A is not correct because the ternary operator is the very same except it does, it, it, it tests for empty. So zero, if card item, or the card item ID is returned zero, then it's going to move over to the right side. Not a problem. Let's move over to the next one. There doesn't seem to be a way to invalidate the cache in a Q consumer. Now, for those of you that aren't aware, a Q consumer is a long running PHP process that Magento has built in. You can trigger it by running, uh, well, actually you can see a list of available consumers by running bin Magento Q consumer list, Q colon consumer colon list. Uh, and you can see the list of consumers that are available. And then you can uh, run Q consumer start one of those consumers. Really easy to do. Well, this is a PHP process that just runs in the background. Uh, and it's basically like a daemon. Uh, it, it, it just runs. So what the implication here is that object manager is also running the entire time this process is running, which means that if we stick a class in object manager by IE loading it up, in this case, we are would be loading up this identify cart item price class into object manager by utilizing it. This, this is actually always there. This, this class cache class variable is always in memory. So what happens if we hit RabbitMQ with a message that says, you know, that uses this functionality, and then a minute later, while this same consumer is running, hasn't been closed out yet, it's hit again with it. And let's say the price, very variables to calculate the price are different. We are in trouble. It's going to return the first calculated value. Thus, this is a problem. And ultimately, to save yourself uh, some uh, headache there, this is the correct answer. This is what I was going for in this case. There's not a way to invalidate the cache in a Q consumer. Now, how would we fix this? Well, one of the easiest ways to do this is to pull out that cache private variable and throw it in another class. Now, Joseph, you're talking about too many classes here. I get it. But ultimately, we would call it like cart item cache. We would have two methods in there. This is not an action. This is not meaning to do something or to fetch something. This is like a storage mechanism. We would put this in the model directory. And in this case, what we would do is we would have two methods. Get, uh, well, actually, maybe three. Get, set, and clear. Uh, and the, that clear method would be called on a at some point before this method is called. So when the when the consumer is triggering functionality to run in the system, one of the first things it might do is clear this cache, or maybe it would clear this cache for a specific order or whatever. Like there's some some logic one can work with there. That's the first thing that should happen. Uh, and in this case, if it doesn't happen, this private cache will always remain uh, in in memory until this consumer is closed out, which is why you can get some very, very weird errors. Yeah, or at least if not an error, weird calculations. That is what I was hoping to communicate here today. We can look at the final answer quickly. Uh, the null safe operator may throw an error if it's used multiple times in the same object tree. Uh, that's the null safe operator is right here. It's not going to throw an error if you use multiple times in the object tree. But make sure you're using the null safe, use the null coalesce, use the terminary operator wherever it fits best, and pretty much you're going to go for the null um, the null coalesce over the ternary operator. Use these uh, use these uh, syntactic sugar. It's going to clean your code up, make it so much easier to read, so much easier to use, and actually in this case right here, it's going to make it more bug free. Like. This would have taken two lines. Every other, every additional line you write is one more line to have a bug in it. Good luck, friends. Keep up the great work and look forward to bringing you more of this great, highly practical content from our learnings and our mistakes as developers.